Good afternoon. My name is Martin Kaltenberg from the Semantic Web Company, and I'm very happy to tell you a little bit about the Open Data Portal Austria, that is a, an initiative for non-government open data. So a little bit of the background. As Tom already said, I'm coming from Semantic Web Company, so we are sitting in Vienna uh, and focusing on semantic information, knowledge management, and data management. So that's one of the hats I'm, I'm wearing. The other one is uh, we have in Vienna an Open Knowledge Foundation chapter since 2011, and an ODI node now since September 2015. So as you see, we're doing a lot of things in that area. Um, open data in Austria. So last year, we had a, a lot of success here. You see two things. In March, we received, or the, the Vienna, the city of Vienna team wins the European Innovator Award 2014. You see Nelly Kroos, so you didn't see her that morning, but you can see her on my picture here. She was in Athens last year. Uh, and the second thing that was interesting, uh, Data GVAT, so the National Data Portal, won the UN Prize for Public Services. And it didn't want it because the catalog is not great, because we could have much more data in it, to be honest, that uh, should be open. We want it because of the cooperation we have in Austria with all the stakeholders involved. So we have industry, we have public administrations, politicians, and also community, sorry, <coughs> community involved in, in the work on open data, and the prize we received for this one. So what we have in place is public administration is leading. It's pushing the topic. We have a very vital community in place. Uh, and what was the case one year ago, the infrastructure for non-governmental data or non-government data was missing. So we started an initiative that is called Open Data Portal AT, and it is the central metadata or data portal and catalog for non-government data. So what we tried uh, to bring up here is a little bit the different way that we heard before, not using the data, but publishing data from industry, from NGOs, NPOs, uh, from cultural heritage, so the whole open glam sector, from research and science and so on and so forth, and bring this with an open license to reuse. And so, hopefully, yeah. Uh, so we put it in place and we launched it in July one year ago. And what is very important is it was a very close cooperation, again, here with the public administration of the national government. So it's somehow the sister portal of our national government data portal, Data GVAT. And it has the same standards, what is very important. So we're using the, the whole metadata standard. It's exactly the same. So you can use of both portals the data uh, and, and foster interoperability. It's a CK and WordPress installation, technically spoken. And everything that you find there is under CC BY Creative Commons. Uh, attribution license, and everything there is non-profit oriented. Uh, who are the project partners? It's on the one hand side, the drivers, Wikimedia Austria and Open Knowledge Foundation, Open Knowledge Now Austria, uh, in cooperation with the Corporation OGD Austria. The cooperation is all uh, public administration units and departments that are publishing open data in Austria. They're in a, under an umbrella and in this cooperation, and we are partnering with it. And uh, interesting-wise, we were not supported by the national government, but we were supported, and that's a little thank you, by the uh, Internet Foundation Austria, so we could really make uh, or establish this portal. So what is in it? You can just find it, Open Data Portal AT. Open data and metadata, for sure, applications. Uh, a library of data tools that we just started and that is evolving now so that you also, if you want to use the data, you find the right tools uh, to do so. Then there are news and highlights, and the important thing is also it's structured along 14 topics. Oops. So uh, these 14 topics are the same that we have on the national, national data portal. So also here you can then say, I'm interested in all the data regarding labor, and then you can push it out or drop, fetch it out of both data portals and set a close cooperation with data GVAT. And we have meetups and things like that. Uh, what we have in place so far, and we have started one year ago, I think with 25 data sets and one application. Uh, we have now 30, 350 data sets, 27 providers of data, organizations that are publishing this data, and seven applications. So for example, of one political part to be of all the spendings, all the incomes and all the outgoing money inside was a very interesting thing. Uh, of the, the commerce of Chamber, we have a lot of statistical data that is not available by Statistic Austria, by the way, as open data. So here we could also uh, do a step forward. And then, as you see here, we have code list and statistics and financial data. We have also product information, uh, very simple things like points of interest, or just locations of shops and things like that, uh, what really worked out. And what we fully underestimated is the effort to 
on the one hand side open the data from non-government, but on the other hand side then to consult them how to open up that data, how to provide machine-readable data in an open license. Uh, so we need a lot of resources and work to go ahead with that. That's a short one only. So the open data portal, the ODP, how we call it, supports also all the business uh, cases and sectors that we had, uh, have identified, as you see in here. Uh, so it fosters and supports that area. And I'm very quick today, so. Um, but that's the most important slide, I think. So what are the findings? So as I said before, we absolutely underestimated the effort. So uh, this is a non-profit project. So I'm doing this in my spare time. And we have a team of 10 people that are doing this in the spare time. And we have Wikimedia Austria that is one and a half person, so just to let you know. So it's a very small project. But uh, so we needed a lot of, of time to convince people, for example, from, I don't want to name it, from a big US company that is sitting in Austria and we asked them for data. They said, oh, that's great. We raise awareness and visibility of our products. We will provide it. And then they were sending me the links to the HTML product pages. And I said, this is not machine readable data. So can you send me an XML file? And this guy said, yes, for sure I will. And he sent me the export of the HTML in XML with all the design information in it and said, here you are. And you can go ahead with that. And I said, yeah, I think we should have a call together and speak about what machine readable data is. So it's a very, very big corporation. So what we've seen here, and that's a little bit, um, I think in the middle, I'm not sure if that works. Uh, yeah, this bullet point here, what people really explore or what they see or organizations is that they can play around with their own data when they go or do this step uh, like open data. It's very easy to just uh, take a little bit of data like RSS feeds or points of interest or just product data and think about machine readability and how to open that up and what people can do with that to rethink a little bit about that. So why are they doing it? They're doing it because uh, they want to raise and create visibility. On the one hand side, uh, you see the data on the portal. So the portal was, for example, uh, launched in a press conference with the Austrian Chancellery. So it was a big thing uh, that we showed everybody. But also through the data, because their data and their products and their things, they're appearing in apps. Uh, and so they think, OK, raising this visibility is interesting. Foster innovation, for sure. So outsourcing, uh, mass customization, things like that, they can foster and, and support that. Uh, we learned that uh, low-hanging fruits first is also here, uh, like in government, a very easy thing. So really use your events RSS feeds so or things like that and, and start with this and then go ahead maybe with more complex data or different data. Um, and we, we saw that it helps uh, organizations to push data management. So as I said before, uh, this big corporation was not aware about machine readability, but also small uh, enterprises or organizations, NPOs, NGOs, starting with these things, they rethink a little bit the data management, they have insight, they learn about it, and via open data they really can push that. What comes next is one thing uh, that is we want to, to foster the cooperation with data publishers more and more. So our focus uh, this and the next year is mainly industry and open glam, as we have in Austria a lot of cultural institutions, and it falls a little bit under the public sector information directive. We, we have a, a great field we can play with. Um, yeah, push the reuse for sure, the use of data. So we will do some, uh, some hackathons, and there will be a, a national-wide competition, an open data competition also at the change of the year where we have a special prize of the ODP. Means if you use data from the open data portal and from the national data portal and put it together into one application, then we will have a special prize on that. Um, and there's a new project on the rise with uh, the University of Economics and with the tech, uh, no, with the Danube University, sorry. Johan, if you're here. Um, it's called Adequate, it's about open data uh, quality assessment and improvement. So we try to take a look at the open data portals that are in place, stick, uh, see whether data quality is really low, improve that, and, and then give it back to the portals that you can raise the data quality because we think it's a very important issue. Uh, what is also in place is that little button here uh, that we also did with Open Knowledge Foundation. It's called Open Data Inside, and that's a parallel initiative where we say, OK, everybody who is doing or is dealing with open data in Austria can use that badge, no matter if you're publishing it, no matter if you're using open data, because we see that um, yeah, a lot of startups, startups, for example, are making use of open data, but they don't talk about it. So we would like to make it visible that they're using open data. At the moment, we have 60 organizations 
uh, that you can see on the opendatainsight.com website. You can take this badge, put it on your own website, and make it visible that you are a supporter and a user of open data. So yeah, that's the Open Data Portal Austria. So data exchange is requested, and we're happy about that. And if you have any questions, feel free to answer, because I'm trying to speak slowly, but there are still four, and th four minutes left. So <laughs> here we go. Thank you, Martin, for a, um, a, a great whistle-stop tour of, of the Open Data Portal Austria. Um, we have time for a few questions. I'm sure I can see folk here in the audience. <laughs> Remember, please, to give your name and your affiliation, please. Uh, Leila Arsan from Tages. Uh, I wonder how do you sustain the portal uh, financially? That's a good thing. Uh, my colleague from Wikimedia, she always uh, makes a comparison with a unicorn. She says the portal is a good thing and the unicorn is also, so we are speaking about a unicorn here. And uh, we need to save the good things. So uh, she was giving a very similar talk at, at Wikimania, but used then the unicorn comparison. Uh, that's a tricky thing and that's it's exactly we're in the middle of it. So one on, the, on the one hand side, we have a little bit of support uh, in this cooperation open government data. On the other hand side, we are now starting to say, and that brings us back to the question of infrastructure, who is responsible for an infrastructure? Uh, in Austria, the, the government is not. So we have a lot of budget costs, so we get a little bit of support, but not a lot. What we are doing now is we are going into uh, industry and, and uh, economy and, and saying, okay, if you want to support us, you can give it, so you can just give money to us. On the one hand side, on the other hand side, we have the great thing that we have a, a very active uh, community that just supports us without receiving any payment for that. So, yeah, it's a, but that, that's a good question. And we did, don't have a real solution, to be honest, on that. So we are thinking about business models to keep it sustainable. Thank you. Other questions from the audience at this stage? OK, I have a, a related kind of follow-on question, then, which is um, really about the the organizations that have contributed data to this um, to this portal and um, the extent to which they're starting to recognize benefits from from a more open approach and from inclusion of their data in, in the portal. Can you comment at all on that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's different approaches. So you've seen one political party, for example, so there they have the spending, so it's it's transparency. So that's just, and it's, it's something very new for Austria. They're the only party that did that. Uh, other ones said, oh, maybe we should do that, but they didn't do so far. <laughs> so it really makes a difference what is good because it's a very new party. On the other hand side, the, the Commerce of Chamber, for example, they see that their, uh, their data is used more often in the meantime. Uh, and, and that being open is a very good thing for their members. And now they are really also promoting it through the memberships. So in Austria, we have a... Uh, a mandatory membership in the, in the Commerce of Chambers, so every company that, uh, that exists there needs to be a member. So it's something giving back the data uh, to all the members and they can use it, for example. And, and some of them also, as I said, uh, raising awareness or visibility. So their, their shops, their, uh, their points of interest, they are now in some applications inside, and, and so hopefully we, we can't counter or measure it. Hopefully, the, the traffic to the shops or the people are using this information more and more. Okay, great. A nice example at the end as well. I, th I don't understand why more people don't do this. Okay, okay thanks very much, Martin. Thank you.